Do not record this shit, dude. This is blackmail, man. We're just having fun. Uh, 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 uh. The summer of 1994, we had a lot of things going on, but a lot of a lot of shit sucked that year. The summer of 1994 was a summer of assassins. It was the summer of a couple of really nasty car accidents. It was the summer of a crazy paper route, and much more. What Fred likes to call the summer that didn't kick ass was eventful. 1994. We were in a production that summer of a play directed by George McGuire at the ACT Theater. It's at the ACT uh, uh, school. We did Assassins, right? We did Assassins, yes. It takes a lot of men to make a gun. Hundreds. Many men to make a gun. Men in the mines and in the steel mills. Men with machines who died for what? Something to buy, a watch, a gun, a shoe, a thing to make the bosses richer. And that role was hard. <clears throat> George like took like three roles and combined them. He's like, mm. boom, boom, so you're gonna be the bad, yeah? You're gonna be the carnival harker or something Barker, like that, yeah, yeah, barker? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you're gonna play Lee Harvey Oswald yeah. at the end. And that's not the way it's written. Yeah. No, it's, it's written, those, those actors. characters are all different actors. Yeah. I was Bick, Sam Bick. You were the, the, the Santa Claus killer. Yeah. I think probably because I really didn't have much to sing. You were like Silent Night, Deadly the, Night the, on stage. I was, I was, oh, first of all, I was not a great singer, and the songs in that show were very difficult for me because, I don't know, the way they were timing. I remember there's a scene where we're all on stage, mm -hmm. and we're all like singing some song together. Yeah. And I'd always fuck it up where I was supposed to come in because we would all sing different parts. I remember that. Yeah. And I would always mess it up because the timing was weird. It was just, who wrote that? Was it Sondheim? Yeah. Yeah, and it's, so it's just, it's not like... You know, four four. It's, it's like David I mean? Mamet of fucking musical theater. Yeah, dog. and you know, I I I just couldn't wrap my head around it. So we could bring Mark in on this. Yeah. Conversation. So Mark was in the show. He played Leon Cholgar. <laughs> What's the thing you told and him to he, say? And he 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 had this monologue about. <laughs> I love this. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> If you're if you're a Droom fan, you'll you'll recall a previous episode about Ghost of Mrs. Muir, where I used mind tricks <laughs> and got Johanna uh, Mackenzie Miller to say uh, gins and tars <laughs> instead of tins and jars on stage. Are you making fun of me? Well, I did the same thing with Mark uh, Homayunijad. He has a monologue where he talks about bottles. <laughs> These bottles with Mrs. Gold Goldstein or Mrs. something. Mrs. Goldstein. <laughs> yeah. And these bottles. And so I, I remember telling Mark, yeah, Mark, make sure you tell him about Mrs. Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Gold bottles. <laughs> 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 and, so he called her Mrs. Gold bottles, didn't he? Uh, Mark, will pro you'll probably deny it, but I want to remember that you did it. You remember gold bottles, but you forgot about the beating. You thought you were funny, huh? Come get your beating. Come get your beating. Mark, let's let you come on out of the universe and talk to us for a bit. <laughs> Tell us about Mrs. Gold Bottles. A little, little, uh, little summer that didn't kick ass moment. Assassins. What was your favorite part about Assassins? Could it be when you flipped your car <laughs> on the way to the rehearsal? Fuck. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. He was driving himself to rehearsal one day, and he didn't show up. That's right. And we were wondering, what happened to Mark? It turns out he got hit in an intersection in San Francisco and it flipped his truck away. <sighs> and I don't know, did he go to the hospital? I guess he'll tell He us. did. Remember? We all went to the we, hospital. That's right. The whole cast that went to the hospital. That was Mark's second trip that summer to the to hospital. See, to make sure Mark was okay. Oh, my poor little Mazda truck. That was the first car I ever had. And I took it to rehearsal and I wasn't ready for that city driving, you know? And I made a turn at a yellow and a cab came and clipped me from behind and my truck just started rolling and rolling down the street. It was terrible. That was not the only accident that happened that year. <laughs> Dilbert and me <laughs> were in the car with Anna and Kirsten Lund and her car got like rear-ended to the point where we all had to go to the hospital. Where were you? We were on Verveas Avenue. 
in where's Vallejo, that? in Tennessee. In Vallejo. In, in Vallejo, yes. You got rear-ended. We got fucking nailed. Whose car was it? Anna. Oh, Anna's car. Anna and Dilbert, <laughs> and then you and Kirsten were in the back seat making out, and you got... <laughs> No, 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 no. Oh, no. I you got, got, I got, got the story wrong. That's, got, how, that's got, how I heard it, Fred. That's the wrong, wrong <laughs> mouth. <laughs> so it was you, Mark, Kirsten. I was sitting in the far back, in the left hand, the far left hand back side. And we got hit by a van Shit. that was going like 65 down, uh, down Tennessee Street. Hit us, and it was just gnarly. I remember getting whiplash so bad, I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. I had my head up my ass. Jesus. It's a good thing I didn't die, dog. Dude, we could yeah. have all died. I remember yeah. us going to the hospital and going to Assassin's rehearsal that next day and looking at Mark, and we're like, Damn, are you sore? <laughs> yeah, my back's sore. Are you sore? Yeah, my neck. <laughs> Still went. Shit, we didn't even. Sh we didn't. I even, don't remember that. I don't even think we told George. It was yeah. just like, oh fuck it, let's just go. This accident actually took place before I rolled my truck, and I did a really stupid thing. After the first accident with the little Toyota of Anna, I uh, went down to the scene of the crime and I found the little part of her car that said Tercel, and I threw it in the back of my truck. And I swear that gave me bad luck because it wasn't a week until I rolled my truck in the city. Assassins we did, like Fred said, it was in San Francisco at the ACT uh, school. So we drove from you know Fairfield Vallejo every day to go to rehearsal and performances. And that was always uh, a pleasure because we would try to carpool. <laughs> Um, I think mostly Fred would drive. I don't think I ever drove. No, this. Charlotte drove. Charlotte drove sometimes. Fred drove sometimes. Another comedic genius was in that car. Who? Bryce. Oh, Bryce Byerly, that's right. There was one day when we showed up to rehearsal and Charlotte told George that we were being very lewd and lascivious in the car on the way to rehearsal. Which was for me was a shock we would we would be in the car talking about just bullshit and i, I swear remember. to you charlotte would partake she would offer her own you know content do you remember what she said that day no i do she said are there <laughs> what we were talking about some girls i don't know how it came up and she asked are there <laughs> what this is how I felt. Oh, yeah, Jesus I felt like Christ. that was the most shocking thing that was said on that trip. Yes. And then when she said we were being shocking, I remember thinking, what? No, fucking. You're if crazier I, than we were. If only GoPro existed in goddamn 1994. <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember much about doing the show. I, I remember very little about actually do performing it. I felt like every, it was all solos. I felt like I didn't have any interaction with anyone. It was tough. For me, back then, I did, I, it was all or nothing for theater. When you're doing a play, it's like, I gotta give it everything I got. And I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't feel that connection because I had to do so many things that summer. Like, me and Mark worked a paper route that was just fucking horrible. We made, I don't know why we thought that would be a good job. I think it's because we didn't want to clock in at a job every day, even though, if you think about it, a job like a paper route is relentless. There are no days off for yeah. a paper route. <laughs> you go every, every fucking day, day rain or shine. <laughs> oh, you're, you're tired? Tough shit. Wake up. Get the papers. Get the papers. The thing about the paper route was we had to not only deliver. Deliver was the easy part at five in the morning. We had to go and collect the money from every single house on foot. And that wasn't easy. And most of the people didn't have the money. We never made too much off of that. Yeah, that was kind of a, a loss. <laughs> and man, me and Mark had a weird experience. We used to always talk about it like it was like taxi driver and shit. And be like, we were in there with like some of the weirdest people in Vallejo. And that's a bold statement because Vallejo is a home to a lot of weird people. You pick up the papers? Most of these dudes, John, were working there. You could tell had been working there for like 25 years. We, we had like this employer named Jimmy McPeak. He was like this old Irish guy. He's like, hey, Mark, Fred, uh, you know, I haven't seen the paperwork from the last time. He I don't know why they kept us on. Sometimes we would deliver and sometimes we were like, eh, <laughs> want to go to Denny's? Isn't sometimes it? you would decide to go to Denny's rather than deliver the paper. Well, they had like these baseball cards at Denny's that you could get with like your meal. Me and Mark were like big into collecting them. All I wanted was one fucking card. That's it. 
I wanted Ricky Henderson. And I got everyone but Ricky Henderson. And I was like, son of a bitch! I want Ricky! You know, Ricky's the great Oakland A. All time this was a Denny's exclusive card. Denny's exclusive cards. Yeah. And I remember Mark got that goddamn card one morning. And I was oh. like, fuck! <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't know what I want to. It's Ricky Anderson. It's like, son of a bitch, I'll trade you two Mike Piazzas. I'll trade you Frank Thomas. Mark's all like, I already got him. I was real lucky with those Denny's baseball cards. I mean, it wasn't just the Ricky Henderson. Normally, you only get one card per pack. One time, I opened it up, and it was two cards in the same pack, and it was Tim Salmon and Mike Piazza. This drove Fred nuts. You son of a bitch! You don't even like the A's! You don't even like baseball! My- yeah, but I like teasing you! <laughs> that That is a dick. Mark, that's a dick move. Mark probably don't you even remember that. should have given Fred that Ricky Henderson. He did. He did. He was just playing with me. Uh, yeah, there was that. So the paper route assassins. So imagine you're trying to fucking rehearse this show where you're playing like you have to sing all these songs and George has got this huge responsibility of me and I'm like showing up like fucking dragging ass, tired as a motherfucker. He's like, boom, what's wrong? You've had these songs for weeks. Uh, George, I'm not getting any rest at night. I don't know why. I got whiplash. I got delivered newspapers. George, you don't understand my neck. I'm sleepy. <laughs> my brain from the weed. <laughs> <laughs> I, have I just a- don't understand the softball team. Yeah, that's right. We were also playing softball that summer. That softball team. We Sucked. played the city... Uh, co-ed league in Fairfield. Our team name was Hardcore Ruth. We had we had an all-star team. Oh. Who every week was different because I always had to find people to play because it was always we were always missing somebody. So I had to just bring in ringers. Like I remember I brought my nephew in for a couple games, Chris. He played the whole season. Oh, did he? Yeah. He was, <clears throat> was the he best regular? player. He was regular? He was the regular. He was our third baseman. And we also had Chris Miller. Betsy played. Molly. <laughs> did Molly Fiondica play? I think she might have. She may have been a fill-in. We needed ten people, and I can only think of, like, five. So there's five who are a blur to me. Every game was tough to get our team together. We only played so we could go to Chevy's afterwards get some chips and salsa, which was fun. Yeah, that's where Chris Miller coined his phrase. Chips and salsa, bitch. That's right. One of Chris Miller's favorite things in the world was chips and salsa. Game would be over. What do you guys want to do? Chips and salsa, bitch. (laughs) So we go to uh, Chevy's. Fred actually wrote a song about it. It's a little sad lament because when Chris and Johanna moved away and I think the summer of 95, I was, we were both a little sad. Okay, Okay. ladies and gentlemen, it's 24th of uh, May. I'm warming up with the bat. If I play tonight, be excited. <clears throat> if I drop a ball, leave. No, the sky is black and gray. Cause Chris and Johanna have moved away. Now the sky is black and gray. Because Johanna and Chris have moved away. I won't forget to write Johanna and Chris's apartment. Remember that apartment that they Mm -hmm. lived in? Yep. Me and Chris are swimming one day. This gal comes running out of her apartment like, oh my God, oh my God. This gal was running for her life. Someone was trying to kill her. And me and Chris were like, uh, (laughs) what? 
this is like not a safe place to live, dude. We just kind of like we're naive. Yeah. Do you remember seeing like violent things happen? I mean, living in Vallejo, you, mm. yeah, well, yeah, it would happen. Like mm. you would see like crazy moments with adults, mm. and it was kind of like a little bit traumatizing. Mm -hmm. It kind of remind harkened back to that for me. It was just like, ugh, damn it, Fairfield, you're just like Vallejo. I liked hanging out with Chris a lot because he was into a lot of sports, but yet he was into like acting and movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I could always like have like these long, extensive conversations <clears throat> with Chris about baseball. And at that time, he was not a Chicago Cubs fan. He was a Colorado Rockies. I remember. Bitch. I remember. Dante Bichette. Oh, yeah, Dante Bichette, dude. He's going to make the All-Star team, dude. Andres Galarraga. Hey, Beeman, you see that Andres Galarraga home run? with like 585 feet of fucking pro player stadium, dude. <laughs> I mean, he was probably juiced out of his mind, but, you know, I'm an A's fan. I can't really talk shit. <laughs> I forget the year that I met Chris. Maybe it was 93? No, you met him earlier because you did Death of a Sales. When was Death of, Death of a Sales? That was 92, dude. I, I never thought I would be friends with the guy because really? I, I didn't think we would, we would ever have anything in common because i knew he was kind of like a like a sporto type you know i felt like he was just doing theater for the the arts credit requirement or something oh, okay for college yeah because uh, he was going off to a, a university or whatever mm -hmm. but you know uh, working with him in death of a salesman i got to know him and i thought he was a fucking awesome dude and we became yeah it was kind of shocking friends through that it's so. like you know it was kind of like a don't judge a book by its cover type moment he kind of looks like the stereotypical jock that would pick on theater kids, you know what I mean? Right. But he wasn't that. He was, he was super cool. So. And you talk about another actor that was committed. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Chris yeah. did. He always just wanted to do something crazy in a movie. And he did it in a movie that you'll see eventually. You know what? I got a better game. Beat little brother up. <laughs> summer of 94. The summer, summer 90... that didn't kick ass. I was 21. I mean, I wanted to meet some gals. There were no gals for me. <laughs> and that's not a sad story. I laugh at it now. It's hilarious. Well, I want to say <laughs> I want to say this, Fred. All the girls that we knew loved you because you made them happy. <laughs> I remember you telling me they, that they would just call you to cheer them up because they were fighting with their boyfriends or whatever. <laughs> And because you could always count on Fred to cheer you up. I was a funny yeah, guy. So Fred was like the clown. But I was a nice guy. I was hoping I'd be in a play and I'd meet a girl. Like how it, it seemed like it happened for all my friends but me. <laughs> but, mm. you know, hey, that's how I was when I was 21. That mm -hmm. was a bit of a bummer. I had like an expectation list for the summer of 94. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and the thing that sucked about it is... The summer of 94 started so well. We shot that movie of yours, The uh, Hamburger Lady. I smell guns! <laughs> seemed like things were, like, going to be fun. You know, we were young. We were... I mean, when you're 21, dude, your energy is through the roof, dude. It just didn't meet the expectations. But you know what <laughs> you do in, in life is you learn to to table expectations and put energy into other things making movies or writing songs or so mark what sucked for you in 94 there were some good things about the summer of 1994 but it also had its trials and tribulations and growing up at that time becoming an adult i had to deal with adult setbacks but it didn't stop us we continued to make Super 8 films, a multitude of them, um, and we later formed a theater company, and today we're expressing our art through Drew. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Talk to you later, John. Talk to you later, friend. And all you out there in Dreamland, goodbye. Money. Baby, you know what time it is. I just don't.